Hello, and welcome to the presentation of our Women and Gender in Science and Technology Summer 2013 Final Class Project. For our final project, we, Tyler Benson, Brian Seguin, Jordan Wainwright, and Andrew Walters, have created a PowerPoint presentation of influential women inventors and scientists, both past and present, and descriptions of their contributions to society. It was cited in our readings for this class on more than one occasion that one of the major factors influencing women's decisions not to enter STEM fields is a perceived lack of role models. It is our hope that by making this presentation available online and reaching out to teachers and other mentors to young students, more young women might be influenced to explore STEM fields as possible career options. We'd like to thank you in advance for taking the time to explore our presentation. The first woman on our list of influential women in technology is probably one of the most easily recognizable, at least for members of our generation. In 1983, on board the Space Shuttle Challenger, Sally Ride became the first American woman in space. Prior to joining NASA, Sally earned degrees in English and Physics from Stanford University. After leaving NASA, Sally formed her own company, which created educational materials with the purpose of influencing young girls to pursue fields in science and technology. The next woman on our list is Augusta Ada Byron, Countess of Lovelace, or simply Ada Lovelace. At an early age, possibly 17, Ada was introduced to Charles Babbage, an inventor at the time who had created a mechanical machine for performing mathematical calculations. Ada became fascinated with Babbage's creations and soon went on to write a paper in which she described several higher level functions that a machine should be capable of performing. Modern computer programmers would recognize these functions as fundamental building blocks of modern programming languages. It is for these reasons Ada is often considered the first computer programmer, even though the computer wouldn't be invented for another hundred years. The programming language Ada, used by the government agencies, is named in her honor. Next on our list is Nettie Stevens. It is widely accepted that Nettie is the first American woman to be recognized for her contribution to science. It is interesting to note that Nettie did not begin her research until the age of 39 and she died 11 years later. In the relatively short span of her research, by studying mealworms, Nettie discovered that males contain an X and a Y chromosome, while women contain two X chromosomes. It is also interesting to note that posthumously, there were attempts by her peers to downplay her role in her own research and discoveries. And in the category of early women inventors, we meet Mary Anderson. In winter of 1903, Mary traveled to New York where she noticed something peculiar. Whenever the weather would turn inclement, the trolley drivers would have to roll down their windows because they couldn't see out the front windshield. When Mary returned home, she promptly invented the first windshield wiper. She received a patent for her invention, and 15 years later, the windshield wiper had become standard equipment on all automobiles manufactured in the U.S. Next on our list is Edith Clark. In 1918, Edith became the first woman to graduate from MIT with a master's degree in electrical engineering. She moved on to work for GE and in 1921 invented a graphical calculator useful for solving various electrical power transmission line equations. She later developed a mathematical method for determining how much power an electrical power line could carry without becoming unstable. This came at a critical time in our country's infrastructure as power lines had begun to go up that traversed incredibly long distances. Temple Grandin is widely recognized as a modern-day hero for her work in the areas of animal welfare, particularly livestock, and also advocacy for autism. At three years old, Temple was diagnosed as autistic, and instead of running from it, she embraced it, and through her awareness of her autism, she has been able to develop several guidelines for the ethical treatment of livestock, indeed winning awards from groups such as PETA. She also created a device called a hug box to assist people with autism who are hypersensitive to human touch. Another woman in the category of early American inventors is Mary Keyes. Mary is the first woman to receive a U.S. patent for her discovery of a clever way to weave straw, silk, and thread together. This was primarily used to design women's hats. It is interesting to note that even though the U.S. Patent Act was passed in 1790, the first patent to a woman wasn't issued until 20 years later. 
primarily due to property laws of the time involving women. Probably the most famous scientist on our list is Marie Curie. Marie is famous for her study of radioactivity, particularly its sources and effects. She won a Nobel Prize for Physics for her research, followed by another Nobel Prize in Chemistry. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize and remains to this day the only woman to win Nobel Prizes in two different categories. Unfortunately, it is widely believed that her longtime study of radioactivity ultimately resulted in her death. Today, the unit of measure of radioactivity is called a Curie in her honor. Many people consider Lisa Meitner to be the most significant woman scientist of the 20th century. Lisa and a few of her colleagues essentially discovered the atomic reaction we call nuclear fission and the vast amount of energy it is capable of releasing. It is interesting to note that many of Lisa's colleagues were awarded the Nobel Prize for their research, but Lisa's contributions were essentially overlooked. In 1992, element 109, the heaviest known element in the universe, was named Meitnerium in her honor. Another pioneer in the field of computer science is Grace Murray Hopper. Grace was a programmer on some of the earliest computers and was instrumental in the development of some of the early programming languages, COBOL for example. She is also credited with creating the first modern program compiler. In addition to this, Grace also served in the U.S. Navy, incredibly not retiring until the age of 79 years old. The modern term debugging was coined by Grace when literally a moth had to be removed from a computer. In 1818, Maria Mitchell was born to parents who were Quakers. They were actually unusual for their time in that they believed that boys and girls should be given identical qualities of education. At an early age, her father taught her how to use a telescope, and by age 12, she helped him calculate the exact timing for an annular eclipse. Maria later became the first professional woman astronomer in the U.S. and also the first woman elected to the American Academy of Arts and Science. In 1847, she became the second woman to discover a comet, which later became known as Miss Mitchell's Comet. Later, she became the first woman elected to the American Philosophical Society and also helped found the American Association for the Advancement of Women. Born in China, Chen Chengwu drew the attention of the U.S. government for her early work in the field of nuclear fission. She moved to the U.S. while in her 30s and joined the Manhattan Project, developing a process to enrich uranium to act as fuel for the first atomic bomb. Later, Chen Chung and two of her colleagues disproved a law of physics known as the Law of Parity. Her colleagues were awarded the Nobel Prize for their research, but Chen Chung was passed over, many believe simply because she was a woman. She was the first woman elected to the American Physical Society and also received the Medal of Science, which is the country's highest scientific award. For her work, Chen Chung is often referred to as the first lady of physics. At the remarkable age of 21, Katherine Stinson became the fourth woman in the U.S. to earn a pilot certificate. She loved flying so much, she decided on being an aviatrix as a career becoming the first woman to perform a mid-air loop and successfully going on to perform this technique over 500 more times. Catherine was also one of the first women authorized by the U.S. to carry air mail. Catherine is also credited as being the first pilot to produce night skywriting. Remarkably, Gertrude Illion graduated Hunter College at age 19, summa cum laude, with a degree in chemistry. Unfortunately, laboratories in her time refused to hire women chemists, and she was unable to obtain a position in a laboratory until World War II when more positions for women in the industry opened up. She was eventually hired by Burroughs Welcome, which is now GlaxoSmithKline, and went on to not only develop new ways to create medicine, but actually develop drugs to help combat diseases such as AIDS, leukemia, and herpes. In total, Gertrude assisted in the development of 45 medical patents, and for her work, Gertrude was presented the Nobel Prize in Medicine, and also the National Medal of Science. A pioneer in the study of primates, chimpanzees in particular, Jane Goodall is now world famous for her research in the field of primatology. 
Her research has linked many similarities between chimpanzees and humans, including what is documented as tool making and has provided many clues to humans' evolutionary past. She continues her studies and has also founded the Jane Goodall Institute, dedicated to the well-being of all things. American chemist Stephanie Qualick is credited with inventing polyparaphenylene terephthalamide, or Kevlar, while working for DuPont. In case you're not familiar with it, Kevlar is the component in bulletproof vests that gives the vest its characteristic strength and lightness. For her various chemical inventions, Stephanie was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame and received the National Medal of Technology. She has since also served as a mentor to women scientists and assisted in programs to introduce young kids to science. It is often said that necessity is the mother of invention. In the case of Josephine Cochran, it is interesting to note that being of wealth, she did not actually need the device she invented, the dishwasher. When Josephine prevented, presented her invention at the World Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893, it won the highest prize for best mechanical construction, durability, and an adaptation to its line of work. Later, Josephine founded the Garris Cochran Manufacturing Company to manufacture her invention. The company was later sold and eventually became KitchenAid. Another pioneer in the field of invention is Sarah Good. Sarah's story is quite remarkable in that she was born into slavery and later emancipated after the Civil War. After the war, she and her husband moved to Chicago and opened a furniture store. Many of their clients were poor to middle class folk who oftentimes lived in small apartments where space was limited. Sarah invented a folding cabinet bed that was easily converted into a functional desk. For her invention, Sarah was the first African American awarded a U.S. patent. Our final innovator is Mary Phelps. Mary is regarded as the inventor of the modern day brasier, or bra. The story goes that she had purchased a sheer evening gown for a social event and did not like the way her corset appeared under her dress. Up to that point, corsets were the standard undergarment and support for women, but also very uncomfortable. Mary's bra, fashioned from two silk handkerchiefs and pink ribbon, fit nicely under the dresses of the day while still providing support and were much more comfortable. We hope that this short presentation has shown you that women are vital members of the scientific community and it is important that they be included in all processes. Science is not a man's world, it is our world. Whenever women are absent from decision-making processes about the research focus, funding, and promoting of new developments, and wherever women's lives and experiences are absent from this picture, there is lost opportunity for innovative thinking that improves everyone's lives. Mary Wire. Once again, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation. We hope you found it informative. However, we'd like to remind you that it is by no means meant to be a comprehensive list of influential women in science and technology. If you found this interesting, we encourage you to research fields of interest to you, and you'll probably discover many ways in which women have helped influence those fields. We encourage you to share anything you might have learned or found interesting. As we stated in the beginning, our goal with this presentation is to spark interest in young women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematical fields. Thank you again.